for over 50 years. Kirby Morgan has revolutionized commercial diving. From masks to helmets and everything in between. Dive into history with us as we step into the Dive Locker. Morgan Mask 3. This was the first of the masks that had a side block and a demand regulator. The positioning of the side block and regulator set the standards for future masks and helmets. A non-adjustable Scuba Pro demand regulator was used. Twenty of these masks were made and sold to Ocean Systems in 1964. When I was diving AB, I sold my catch to Danny Wilson in Santa Barbara, but the money was not always there, so I had to wait around for it sometimes. So one time I went to see Wilson about getting paid for my catch and found out that he was starting a company to service the oil diving business. I told him I'd be interested in getting a job with the company, and he said, I'll tell you what, if you can keep up with me shot for shot, I'll give you a job. And he puts a fifth of vodka and two glasses on the table. I knew he was a sharp guy, and he probably figured that during the drinking match, I'd forget about the money I came up to get from him. Okay, I said. Let's do it. I followed him shot for shot, and when the bottle was empty, we were both still standing, and I had a job. Then I just kind of passed out and woke up with my head in his toilet and his wife trying to clean me up while he was laughing outside the door. I started working on the Parisma. The Parisma is considered the first American lockout diving bell. Somewhere near completion of the bell, someone walks into the shop with a standard Jap hat breastplate and tries to fit it through the bell hatch. And it won't go. They built the hatch too small. They figure they can't change hatches. So we had a meeting and I volunteered to make a fiberglass mask that we could maybe use in the bell instead of Jap heavy gear. Then they figure out that we don't have time to build a new mask, so Ramsey and I introduced y Dolphs with regulators on them. I shot some pictures of them underwater around the bell. Within about a month, Wilson decides to take me up on my offer to make the fiberglass masks and orders me to make 20 masks. Bob Radcliffe and Bob Christensen help make them as employees of Ocean Systems. Well, I figured that Wilson would only pay me my usual hourly wage for coming up with these masks, so although we built them on Ocean Systems time, I had Pat Curran Bill Wilson for the mold and shells, so they appeared to be built by an outside contractor. Wilson never did figure it out, and a few years back I decided to tell him what really happened, and he was not the happiest I'd seen him. But hey, I'd never have made any money out of the deal any other way with Wilson. There is also another story on this mask. I had a Gonic machine shop make the side block and valve for the Scuba Pro first stage for it. They got very interested in the mask, and a couple of years later, I was in their shop and I saw that they had made some molds off it. They had decided to go into the manufacturing business as General Aquadyne, basically utilizing my designs and my trade secrets to get into the helmet and mask business. Take a look at this mask in the early Aquadines and you'll see exactly what I mean. In those days, I didn't figure there was much I could do about it. So off they went. At the time, I didn't know what intellectual property was, let alone how to register anything. I took care of them by buying the property they were renting. They underestimated the cost of moving, went broke, and sold off the remains of their company. This concludes this episode of the Diving into the Kirby Morgan Archives. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Dive Locker.